In my last video, I said that there are only two password managers that I recommend. Those two are Bitwarden and KeePass. In these videos, I will walk you through both of these password managers, similarities, differences, which one is right for you, and how to get started using them. Before I begin, I would like to remind you that the new oil is entirely community supported. Thanks to donations from viewers like you, we do not have any ads, premium content, or paywalled content, or anything like that. If you would like to help us keep it that way and help this project be sustainable, be sure to donate. We take Bitcoin, Monero, Brave Tips, or Open Collective. That last one is our preferred method these days, and it does allow for custom donations, either one time or reoccurring. Entirely up to you. But but no matter what route you take, every little bit helps. Thank you so much. So for starters, if you are not sure why you need a password manager, please check out my last video on passwords. I'm going to assume that you've done that or paused and went and did that and now you are back. So let's dive right in. Bitwarden and KeePass. Let's start with the similarities. Both are, of course, password managers. Both are open source and both are available on all platforms, which I define as being Debian, Mac, Windows, Android, and iOS. That is pretty much where the similarities end. The biggest difference between the two is that Bitwarden is cloud-based and KeePass is not. Now, there are ways to sync up your KeePass vault, and I will talk about that. Some of the other differences include that Bitwarden is audited. It can also be self-hosted. I don't know if that really counts as a difference, considering that KeePass, again, is not cloud-based, but it's worth mentioning. And because Bitwarden comes from a central authority, all the apps are the same. If you look up Bitwarden on the App Store, the Play Store, your web browsers of choice for a plugin, you will find them all. They're very easy to find because they're all made by the same company and distributed evenly. KeePass, on the other hand, is a little bit different. See, KeePass is not really an app, it's more of a protocol, kind of like Matrix or XMPP. This means that any KeePass app that you use is actually a client. Some of those clients are audited, but not all of them are. The KeePass protocol itself has been audited. That was quite some time ago, but it should still be pretty relevant. I mean, it hasn't changed a whole lot over the years from what I understand, so it should still be pretty secure, even though the audit is a little bit older. Due to the nature of KeePass as a protocol, that means that not all of the clients are available everywhere. So you may need to use several different clients if you want to get that everywhere permeation that you would get from Bitwarden. But don't panic, you can still do that. It's also worth noting that because of the nature of KeePass, again, as a protocol and not an app, that means that it falls on the community to create different clients and different forks that are capable of utilizing this protocol, which in plain English means that if you don't like the way one looks or functions, you can probably find another one for that same operating system that has the features you're looking for. Or if you're a sufficiently skilled programmer, you can make one yourself. Again, for the average person, I think the biggest difference is going to be that one is cloud-based and one is not. Not, which means one will automatically sync all of your data in between devices, but the other one you have to sync up manually. So if you decide the key pass is right for you, I cannot stress how important it is to keep good backups because if that vault gets lost, everything in it goes with it. For most people, I recommend Bitwarden because it's going to be very user-friendly, very simple, it looks clean, and it's got all of the features that you need for free. There is a premium tier, and it does have a few really cool things in it, but for the most part, you can get everything you need for free. If you're still not sure which one is right for you, I recommend watching both videos, or better yet, try them both out. Again, they're both free, at least the basic functionality, so try them out and see which one works for you. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through how to get started with Bitwarden. And we're going to start by going to Bit warden.com now technically you can sign up through the app but i want to go to the website because this is unfortunately the only way to enable two-factor authentication and that's really important that's something we're going to talk about in another video very soon but in the meantime just trust me that we're going to want to do that so before i do that i want to go to downloads here and i want to show you guys they have different apps windows mac linux they have browser plugins for Chrome, Firefox, Safari, Vivaldi, Brave, Tor, you name it. Please do not add plugins to Tor. I don't know why that's there. They have mobile apps for iOS and Android, uh, command line stuff, and then of course the web vault, which is what we are going to be using. First, we're gonna go back to the main page. We're gonna click get started. 
And now it's gonna take us to a page where we sign up. So first off, we pick an email address. In the future, I'm going to talk about masking email addresses and forwarding email addresses. For now, just use whatever email address you normally use and we will change it later. I created one in advance, so we're gonna do that. Now for a master password, in the last video, I talked about how to make a master password. And fortunately, Bitwarden comes with a very good password generator, which I will link to in the show notes. So we go to this website, we're gonna click on passphrase because this has to be easy enough for us to remember it. And as you can see here, we've got a four word passphrase that estimated time to crack centuries. Password score strong. You can include capitalizations if you want. You can include numbers if you want. I wanna go ahead and up that to six just to be safe because we like to future proof things. So this is now going to be our passphrase. Skyrocket, disallow, expert, satchel, yodel, surfboard. Bitwarden likes to add these little hyphens. They're not mandatory. You can make them spaces or you could just make it all one word if you want, it doesn't really matter. But personally, I'm gonna use exactly what they tell me to. A lot of people say don't write down your password. Technically, you can write down your password as long as you leave it in a safe place. Don't leave it sitting on your desk or in your drawer. Keep it in your wallet or write it down in like a secure notes app on your phone, which is another topic entirely. But point being, it's okay to write it down as long as you keep it safe and make sure that it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. Personally, when I come up with a new passphrase like this, it does take me a few days to memorize it. So I write it down in a sticky note, I keep it in my wallet, and then after a couple days, once I've memorized it, I go ahead and shred that sticky note. We've got our email address, we've got our name, we've got our master password. We retype the master password. Now, notice this right here. The master password is the password you use to access your vault. It is very important that you do not forget your master password. There is no way to recover the password in the event that you forget it. They are not kidding. This is how proper end-to-end -end encryption works. They cannot recover your password for you. Write it down if you have to, keep it in a safe place. Do not lose this password. And then of course you can add a hint and then you accept the terms of service and you click submit. Our new account has been created. Now it takes us right back to the login page. Our new account has been created. It fills in my email address for me. I automatically fill in the password and then I log in. Here's the vault. We can verify the email, which is something you will definitely want to do later on in order to access all the features. I'm not going to worry about it because this is just an example vault. This is where we keep all our passwords. The very first thing we're going to want to do, like I said, and this is why we did this online, is we're going to want to go over here to my account and go to two-step login. As a free user, we only have two options. We have an authenticator app and an email. I'm going to go into this more in, in the near future when I talk about two-factor. For most people, the authenticator app will be totally fine and that's totally okay. However, if you are a paid user or if you want that extra security, the YubiKey hardware key is definitely better than the authenticator and it's nothing is ever truly unhackable, but this is about as unhackable as you can get. Again, this is a demo video and I'm gonna talk about two-factor in another video, so I'm not gonna bother with it, but just know one of the first things you should always do in any account, go look for two-factor, see if they offer it, and if they do, turn it on. And if they don't, send them a, I wanna say angry, but in reality, send them a polite email and say, hey, it's 2021, get your crap together. So there's one more thing we're gonna do before we start digging into the vault, and that's we're gonna go over here to tools and we're gonna go to the password generator and we're gonna change the password length. Now by default, it's 14 characters, and it includes uppercase and lowercase letters and numbers. Now, as I said in the password video a couple weeks ago, that's not bad, but I like to do better. So I like to do at least 25 characters and I want that special character thing to be on. So now this is gonna become our new default. And as you can see, every time I click it, it generates a new random secure password. Here is passphrase. If that's more your thing, that should be at least six characters. So now it's gonna keep that. So let's go to our vault. As you can see, we can favorite things, we can trash things, we can make folders for keeping track of things. Now, interestingly, we have four different types of things we can create. The main thing is going to be a login. We can also store card information, we can create identities, and we can store notes. And I'm gonna go in order here. We add an item. What type do we want it to be? We're gonna start with login. Like I said, we're going in order. And I'm gonna use ProtonMail as an example. So ProtonMail, um, we haven't created a folder. You know what, let's go ahead and create folders just so that you guys can see how it works. So we will make, we'll say this is banking. So now we're gonna add a login for ProtonMail. We're gonna put that in our banking folder. Username, the new oil. 
password. You know what? If this is my bank, then username would probably be Nate B. Now, when you're ready to create a password, you can import your existing passwords, which I will explain how to do that shortly. That's a good way to get started, just to get started with using Bitwarden. But eventually, you're probably using bad passwords. You're going to want to replace them with good ones. And you do that with the little circle right here that says generate password. Click on that, and boom, that gives us our long, secure 25 character password. Authentication key, that's a premium feature that has to do with two-factor. You can store your two-factor codes here. I'll talk about that another time. Now, URI, this is really cool. So this is actually something that's highly recommended by a lot of cybersecurity experts. So let's say we're creating a ProtonMail thing here. So I go to ProtonMail, I click login. All right, so here's my sign-in screen. So what I can do, the important part here that we're focusing on, I can take this URL up here, copy it, and save it right here. And then I'm gonna talk more about that in a second. We'll come back to that. Continuing down, we got notes. So I can add, for example, when you enable two-factor in other accounts, they'll give you backup codes. I could save those here. I could save the answers to security questions. I can add custom fields. I can add more notes if I want to. And I can also prompt the master password if I need extra security. So save. Now with this ProtonMail entry, remember how we saved the URL. If you click on it, it takes us right there. See, account.protonmail.com slash login. This is a great defense against phishing attacks because a lot of the time when people are phishing you, they'll send you a link that'll look like it's from your bank or something and it'll say, there's a problem, click here to log in. And when you click here, it'll take you to a page that looks right, but it's not actually the right page. So what a lot of security experts recommend is when you get those kind of emails, instead of clicking link, open a new window, go to your bank and log in like you never got that email. And this is one way that Bitwarden and password managers with saving that URL can be extremely helpful because you can store that login URL so that you don't screw it up. You just open your password manager, click on it, and it'll take you right there. And as a bonus, it'll save the logo right here. So you can very quickly and easily look at each one. Okay, so let's do school. Let's create a new folder and I'm gonna show you why I'll do, I'm doing that in a minute. We will now create a new item. And I'm gonna show you each one. So we'll make this one a card. So this one will be a card name, we'll call it expense account. I don't know where you're working that gives you an expense account to go to school, but sure, why not? So we'll put that under the school folder. Card holder name, Nathan Bartram. Brand, you can pick the card, you know, Visa, MasterCard, Discover, a uh, whole bunch of other ones I've never used, but yeah, we'll say this one's Visa and the number is one, two, three, four, five, six, blah, blah, blah. Expiration date. Do to do 2022 security code is that three digit code on the back. Again, you can add notes like maybe uh, if it's an emergency card, for example, you could add like the zip code or something like that. And then we'll save that. I'll show you a couple more things. We've got identities. So the thing I like to use identity for is disinformation. So my partner, of course, being with me is well aware of how data collection works and stuff like that. And in the Bitwarden account that we share, which I'll talk about in a minute, I have a identity saved that has like a fake phone number, a fake address and all of that kind of stuff. So if she's ever in a situation where somebody's asking for that information, but they don't actually need it, she can just pull that up and give them a fake address. So, you know, again, name, John Smith, not going to worry about folder. Um, we'll say John Smith's a doctor. Oh, excuse me, name disinformation. So that way we can keep these identities separate and that'll be john jacob i'm not gonna spell jingleheimer schmidt um company you can make up a company if you want illumination global unlimited shout out to anyone who gets that reference social security number there are fake social security numbers you can use Michael Basil talks about that. I'm not going to go into that because this is not about misinformation. But I mean, see, this is also good information for if you genuinely need to keep track of this stuff. Like I typically handle a lot of the insurance and the finances and stuff like that. So my partner could put in her actual social security number, her passport, her license number, uh, her, you know, important stuff, email. And I would have all this information right here, easily accessible anytime I needed it. So yeah, we'll go ahead and save that. So now we have an identity. And last but not least, I'll show you a secure note. It's pretty straightforward. You give it a name, grocery list. And that's actually what we use secure notes for. So milk, eggs, time machines. I think they're out of those right now because of the chip shortage. Now, the reason I made the different folders here is to show you guys 
If I click on banking, it shows me only what's in the banking folder. If I click on school, it shows me only what's in the school folder. If I click no folder, it shows me everything else. And of course, if I click all items, it shows me everything. Pretty straightforward. Now over here in the corner, you see organizations. I mentioned that you can share Bitwarden with other people. If you look here on the uh, personal, sharing there's a two person sharing so like you and a partner you can share and get all the stuff i just showed you that's what my partner and i use to share again we share like important passwords like netflix well that's not really important but you know passwords we both use like netflix or we'll share grocery lists and and disinformation if you have multiple people in your family you can go ahead and get a, a family organization for six people for your personal stuff if you want to use like the 2fa tokens i talked about there's the premium, which is $10 a year. On the topic of significant others, premium also comes with emergency access, which I think is a really cool feature that everyone should use, to be honest, if you can afford it. That is basically, if you pass away, the designated person can request access to your account. And if you don't refuse it within a certain time frame, uh, I think it's usually like seven days, they will automatically get access to your account. That's a great way to plan for the inevitable. And if you were to pass away, people would still be able to get into your accounts and take care of business. Definitely do consider that in my opinion. And then of course, if you work at a business, a small business, or even a large business, you can get a Teams thing where everybody can use the same organization and you can share passwords among each other. Um, we use this for my band, actually. The nice thing about sharing as an organization with the band, for example, is we can still take advantage of two-factor and have that very secure two-factor, but everybody can still have access to the two-factor to get into the account. It's just that one extra step to help keep unauthorized people out, but it makes managing all of that among five people very, very simple. All right, so I mentioned you can import data. I will leave this link in the description, but this is from Bitwarden's help desk. And you can import from LastPass, 1Password, Firefox, Chrome. So if you're saving all of your passwords in Chrome or something like that, this page will walk you through exactly how it'll show you. Type this in, click this button and select export passwords. And then it'll even show you, go to the web vault, select tool, select import data, and it'll show you how to import everything. So if you're switching over to a password manager for the first time, I would say step one is to do this, export all your passwords, bring them in to Bitwarden. And then once they're in, work on changing them into something better. And just to kind of show you where that is real quick, here's tools and here's import data. And then you can, again, select Chrome, LastPass, whatever. Dashlane, doesn't matter. You can also export data. That's worth mentioning. CSV is like a spreadsheet. So if for some reason you need to, you can export your data into a spreadsheet as a backup. Just know that if you do that, all your passwords are gonna be plain text. So make sure you keep that somewhere very, very safe. That's pretty much Bitwarden in a nutshell. As I mentioned earlier, Bitwarden is cloud-based. So all of this will be synchronized between different devices. And as I mentioned even earlier than that, Bitwarden is available for web browsers and mobile stores. So, I mean, you can really use this everywhere. And the web plugin is pretty nifty. If you go to a website where it's saved in Bitwarden, it will pop up and ask you like, hey, do you want us to put in the login stuff? And if you log into something for the first time that's not in Bitwarden, again, it'll pop up and ask you, hey, do you want us to save this? It's very, very easy. Like, honestly, they really could not make it any easier. I do feel the never ending need to remind you guys, nothing is unhackable. So don't assume that Bitwarden is gonna stand up to the NS say or something, but for 99% of the population, as long as you're using a good master password and two factor on the initial vault, you're pretty safe against almost all attacks, except for the most sophisticated ones out there. And that is pretty much all there is to it. That is how to get started using password managers. I want to leave you with a few tips of advice that I think will help speed you along in your journey. Number one, start by changing your critical passwords. If you're using this video and this is your introduction to password managers and you're coming from using bad passwords, then start off by identifying the absolutely critical accounts that you cannot afford to lose, like your bank account, your email account, online medical portals, anything like that. Stop what you're doing and go change those passwords to secure ones right now using the secure password generator in your password manager of choice. The rest of them, if you want, you can change them all at once. That's what I did, but I will admit, 
that took like an entire weekend. That was a very exhausting and involving process. So for most people, you're probably gonna wanna change it as you go. So for example, next time you log into something, go ahead and change that password. And then next time you order pizza, go ahead and change that password. As I mentioned, you can use the notes section for your two-factor backup codes. That's something we'll talk about in another video, but that's a really good idea. I recommend doing that. I also mentioned that you can use the notes sections for security questions. Now, here's a real quick trick about that. When you you get asked a security question, it'll usually be something like, what was your elementary school or what was your dad's middle name? In today's world full of data breaches, those are actually very easy questions to find the answer to. If a criminal already has enough information to steal your identity, they can probably find that information in just a few minutes online. So instead of answering those questions honestly, use your passphrase generator to come up with a random word or a couple of random words and use that instead. And then use the note section to remember that. So for example, if the question is, what was your dad's middle name? Come up with Snow Leopard and put that. I don't recommend using actual passwords for this. I recommend using words or passphrases because I have definitely had situations where I've had to call in and verify my identity and they go, hey, what's your dad's middle name? Then I have to sit there and go capital G, one exclamation point, lowercase c, and it's just it's easier just to use a word. Hopefully this video has been helpful for you to get you started in using better passwords and managing your accounts better. I really encourage you to try this. I'm assuming if you made it this far that you're genuinely interested in trying this, but I know some people are kind of like, I'll get to it later. It seems like a lot of work. Go step by step, create an account, import your existing passwords, change the important ones. Just start with that. It'll only take probably about a half an hour tops, but the security that you get will be priceless. I have honestly never had anyone start using a password manager and then come back to me and be like, yeah, I quit using that. It's kind of hard and it's kind of a waste of time. Literally every person I've ever convinced to use a password manager has come back to me later and gone, holy crap, how did I live without this? This is such a life-changing thing. Don't sleep on it go ahead and take advantage. Before I go, I want to remind you that the new oil is entirely community supported. You can help us stay that way by donating via Bitcoin, Brave Tokens, Monero, or on Open Collective, which by the time this video comes out, we should have reward tiers out. Your support helps us remain influence free and helps me to be able to dedicate more time and energy to putting out better quality videos. Until the next video, if you want to learn more about password managers and passwords, check out thenewoil.org.